okay so in this video we are going to see or we are going to understand what is turbidity how to measure the turbidity and what are the acceptable limits or the design standards for the drinking water now so to understand this turbidity let's take an example let's say that you are standing on a beach okay so this is a beautiful beach is there and on this beach there is let's say you have come under water now okay there is water level up to this now if you are looking if you are looking if you are trying to see if you are able to see below the water whatever the surface is there i hope you are trying to visualize this just visualize a little you are standing in the water okay the water is up to your legs and you are trying to see what is there below this water or below this sea water if you are able to see clearly if you are able to see clearly the ground which is there the ground which is there below this water that means there is no turbidity in this water if you are not able to see it properly that means there are certain small particles or small impurities which are blocking your view that is called as a turbid water in hindi we call this as dhunlapan okay so the water is not crystal clear due to presence of some impurities now so this was a just basic understanding now we'll try to write down what is the definition of turbidity so turbidity is the measure turbidity is the measure of extent of extent to which light is either to which light is either absorbed either absorbed or scattered or scattered by the by the suspended by the suspended impurities suspended impurities in water okay so turbidity is primarily caused due to the suspended impurities which are present in water this suspended impurities block the clear vision if you are trying to see through the water now this turbidity can be measured by four major instruments okay so we can say that turbidity is measured by it is measured by so the first one is called as turbidity rod turbidity rod the second one is called as jackson's turbidimeter jackson's turbidimeter the third one is called as bailey's turbidometer or turbidimeter so bailey's turbidimeter and the last one is called as nephilometer nephilometer and this is the most important one. okay so this four we are going to see now so we'll start from the first one that is turbidity rod turbidity rod so we'll write down the points and along with that only we'll understand what has to be done in this process so a rod with a rod with platinum needle a rod with platinum needle is inserted inside water is inserted inside water the depth at which the platinum needle the depth at which the needle the depth at which the needle just becomes 
just becomes invisible just becomes invisible gives the turbidity gives the turbidity of sample okay so i hope from the statements only it is understandable so if this is a glass of water there is water which is present inside this what we'll try to do is we'll take a needle and we'll insert this needle inside this we'll slowly keep on increasing it there will be one point when you will not be able to see the tip of the needle and this depth up to which we have inserted this depth up to which we have inserted the turbidity rod this depth will give us the what it will give it will give us the turbidity of sample in ppm now so this method is a field method so we can use it directly on the field now there is the next method that is called as jackson's turbidimeter the second one is called as jackson's turbidimeter now write down the level of water the level of water is increased is increased till the image of flame till the image of flame cannot be seen or can't be seen now pay attention here so this is a tripod so on this tripod there is a container and on this container we are keeping on this container we are keeping a glass tube okay so we'll keep here a glass tube which will which will have some readings so this is the glass tube now below this below this we are keeping we are keeping a flame so let's say this is a candle here and to this candle we are lighting it up so now it will have some flame water is inserted in this was water is inserted in this glass tube so let's say the level of water is up to this much so this much water is present now what we will do is what we will do is we'll try to see from here we'll try to see from here if we are able to see this flame if we are able to see this flame then we will slowly increase the level of water in the tube so we'll keep on doing it until this flame we cannot see that means the level of water is increased till the image of the flame cannot be seen now so it is used it is used when turbidity is greater than when turbidity is greater than 25 ppm parts per million now you should know this point is very important this method is a lab method so you can see clearly this flame and all this all arrangement has to be done in the lab only so this is a lab method now coming to the next method this is bailey's turbidimeter so under this write down bailey's turbidimeter 
works on works on color matching taking color matching technique okay so the precision is very high okay so in this case the precision or we can say accuracy of this turbidity meter is very high as the accuracy is very high these are generally used these are generally used in domestic water supply domestic water supply now if you see this bailey's turbidity meter and neflo meter then these points are similar there is one major difference between these two methods and that is very very important and that can be asked in exam so write it down and highlight it in bailey's turbidity meter in bailey's turbidity meter light intensity light intensity is measured light intensity is measured in the direction in the direction of incident light in the direction of incident light whereas in nephlometer in nephlometer light intensity is measured light intensity is measured perpendicular that is 90 degrees 90 degrees to the incident light okay so what is this incident light and reflected light so for that we'll just take the example so this is a glass container which is having our water sample in it so water is present inside this okay now if you look it carefully then there will be certain there will be certain suspended impurities which are present in this now if we if we apply certain light rays to this if we apply certain light rays to this water then what will happen when the light rays when the light rays will strike let's say this is a suspended impurity and this is a light ray so when this is striking this suspended impurity then it will not be able to reach the another surface and let's say if we have if we have certain instrument which is present here certain instrument which is present here to measure how much amount of light is incident on this surface okay so try to understand that this light first is incident from this left hand side then it will strike some of the particles hence the total light will not be able to reach the next surface so the amount by which it has been reduced that will give us the idea of turbidity in water if the less amount of rays let's say total 10 rays we are incidenting so how many 10 rays so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 9 and 10 so this total 10 rays we are applying to this water when they are passing through this water out of this 10 rays only four rays are able to reach this surface so in this case we can see that six rays are not able to reach the surface because of the turbidity now so based on this scattering there are the two major or two instruments or we can say two methods that are used so in this bailey's turbidity meter the light intensity is measured in the direction of incident light that means this is the direction of incident light 
okay this is the direction of incident light and it is measured in the same direction that means the measurement instrument is kept in this direction whereas if we use if we use the nephelometer then we will have to keep we will have to keep the measuring instrument perpendicular to the direction of incident light so we have to keep the measuring instrument here what will happen some of the rays some of the rays when they will hit it when they will hit it it will get scattered in the perpendicular direction okay it will get reflected in perpendicular direction so this reflected rays this reflected rays which are 90 degrees to the incident one incident light this will be measured by the nephelometer okay see we don't have to do phd in this so don't need to go in much detail just try to understand what is the direction of incident light and where should be the light measured that is is the light measured in the direction of incident light or is the light measured in the direction perpendicular to incident light if we are measuring the intensity of light in the direction of incident light then such instrument or such principle we are using in bailey's turbidimeter if we are measuring it perpendicular to the direction of light then we are using the principle of nephelometer now the last one that we are going to see now is nephelometer okay so this nephelometer works on the principle of works on principle of light scattering a light scattering okay so it can measure it can measure low turbidity low turbidity with high precision okay the turbidity which is given by nephelometer turbidity given by nephelometer is in ntu okay ntu that is nephelometric turbidity unit nephelometric turbidity unit so rest all the points we have seen it now now one thing you have to write it that is what is the acceptable range for turbidity so for turbidity we'll write it on the first page only so for turbidity the acceptable range is 1 ppm or we can say in terms of ntu so it is 1 tu to 5 tu sometimes it is 10 also but we'll try to write it up to 10 that is 1 tu to 10 tu and what is this tu stands for turbidity unit turbidity unit so sometime this 1 tu this we can relate it to 1 mg per liter and also 1 tu we can relate it as 1 ppm so if in the answer it is given what is the range sometimes if it is given like this 1 ppm to 10 ppm so this is also correct if 1 mg per liter to 10 mg per liter is given then this is also correct so this is all about the turbidimeter and turbidity